Hello and welcome to this new episode of Matrix Tutorials. Today we are going to deploy a sliding sync proxy. If you have an account on matrix.org, this is not necessary for you. The proxy is only useful for people who host their own home server. Matrix.org already has one and it works out of the box. Sliding sync is an upcoming change to the matrix specification you might have heard about at FOSDEM during Matthew's Matrix 2.0 talk. If you haven't yet, I strongly recommend watching it to know everything we've been doing. If you want to dig deeper in sliding sync and how it works, I also recommend the FOSDEM talk Clients as good as you'd expect by Keegan, Ben and Mauro, who cover it end to end from the spec and server side to the SDK and client side. For the sake of simplicity, we are going to build on top of our first ever matrix tutorial, the Docker Compose one. The concept will remain the same whatever your deployment method is. So this is what we had deployed during the first tutorial. The reverse proxy, Synapse and its Postgres database, a Nginx to serve the dot well-known file for the delegation of incoming traffic. This was all hosted on a single home server and when your, cl cl when your client connects, it connects directly to your server. The sliding sync proxy we're going to deploy is a proxy. So it sits in front of your home server. With that said, the sliding sync proxy can be hosted on the same machine as your home server. So you might wonder why there is a sliding sync proxy in the first place if we're going to deploy it on the same server. After all, it's supposed to be the next step in the spec. Well, it's because of the next step part. Sliding sync is not finished yet and still needs to be worked on. It's much easier to work on an independent piece of software rather than to have to maintain a branch of Synapse or Dendrite or Conduit. The proxy acts as a sort of buffer client. Without anyone connected, it doesn't do anything. The first time you connect to the proxy, you give it your access token. The sliding sync proxy then uses this access token to do a regular sync against the server and gets a local copy of your account as would any other client. This is why the first time you connect using sliding sync will be probably slow. But then the sliding sync proxy will stay in sync with your home server. Next time you open your client, it will already be up to date and serve you the most important content first. Your UI will update much more quickly than with a regular sync. Eventually, sliding sync is going to be merged in the spec. It will make sense for Synapse, Dendrite and Conduit and other home server implementations to support it and the proxy will become irrelevant. So this was our deployment. Today, we're going to add a sliding sync proxy, its database and a volume for the database. The sliding sync proxy itself doesn't store anything outside of its database, so it doesn't need a volume. We're also going to update the well-known file served by the Nginx. This is the file we used to serve to tell people that all Synapse was actually here. Um, and this is delegation of incoming traffic. If you don't remember it, you may want to watch the tutorial number one again. And this is what we're going to add. We're going to tell all clients that we have a sliding sync proxy and this is where you can find it. So let's get started. All right, so what we need to do first is to open a browser and a search engine and look at matrix sliding sync. And we're going to land on matrix-org slash sliding-sync, so the repository of the sliding sync proxy. We have some install instructions and a lot of things in the readme, but what we are going to look for are the releases on the right side. So we go to the releases and it says Docker images available at this address, which we can click on. And we have an image that we can use in our, in our Docker Compose. Um, so I opened a terminal on my um, server and I have my Docker Compose at the root of my uh, root user directory. So please don't do that. Uh, it's obviously not production ready. This is just for the sake of the demo. I'm opening uh, this Docker Compose file. So this is the same one that we ended up at the end of the first matrix tutorial. If I go to the bottom of it, I'm going to, whoops, to paste a few lines. So we are going to examine that together. What do we have? So I declared another container, the sliding sync proxy. The image it's going to use is actually the link we have 
here, well, the link, the instruction we have here. Um, so the, the main difference we have is I use v099.1 uh, instead of main because I usually like to do the updates myself, but it's really up to you and how you manage uh, your containers. So restart and less stopped. And then we have three environment variables. The first one is a singv3 secret. So it's a super long random string. Obviously use something better than that in prediction. Um, that is going to be used by the sliding sync proxy. It's not the same as the Postgres uh, password. Then we have the sync v3 server. So this is the address where your synapse or dendrites or whatever home server lives. And this needs to be the same as you have in your well, well known file. Uh, so for example, if I go in my case, chipjob.org slash well-known slash matrix slash client, I have the base URL. So it needs to be the same here uh, in the SyncV3 server. Then I have the SyncV3 DB. This is the uh, connection string that the sliding sync proxy is going to use to connect to the database. So I decided to create a user called SyncV3. Then I created a database called SyncV3 as well. Uh, the host is going to be the name of my Docker container uh, of, of the Postgres database is going to connect to, and then the password is the password I'm, I'm going to use. Uh, so fantastic, I have that set in place. Uh, I need then to add the right traffic levels uh, to expose that sliding sync proxy on the internet. So of course you need to make sure that you have a, a DNS entry that matches, so uh, an A record. I decided to use sliding.matrix.chiptop.org because it makes sense for me, but you can use whatever you want. And then I have a simple uh, Postgres database. So it's a uh, Postgres 15 um, environment variables. I have the user sync v3. This is the user I'm using in the connection string um, above the Postgres password is the one I use in the connection string above as well. And same for the database name. And that uh, container needs to have a volume. So I'm going to add it here as well. Uh, the volume is async underscore db underscore data. Right, and I can give it a go and do a docker compose up dash d. It's going to start everything. I can do a docker ps and my sliding sync proxy is restarting. So what is happening? We can look docker logs sync proxy one. Uh, I know. Oh yeah. So this is uh, something that can happen. So it has restarted because uh, the way we specified it is not really production ready. I just said that the sliding sync proxy needs, uh, well, depends on the Postgres database, but as such, it does not wait for the Postgres database to be ready. So it can crash at first, but because I asked it to restart regularly, uh, the the sliding sync proxy is restarting and at that moment the database is ready and the sliding sync can connect. Um, so that's cool. We can have a look at the logs. Uh, dash f uh, sync uh, proxy one. And so we can see that the, the sliding sync proxy managed to connect with the database. It's listening to everything on the port 8888 uh, and it does nothing as such. Right, so what we need to do then uh, is to update the well-known file. So for that, we are going to go to the root of the sliding sync Gitra repository. We can go to the docs folder and there is a landing.md file, uh, which is going to give us the value that we need to add to the well-known file. So obviously you need to upgrade to uh, change the URL here to match what you need. Um, so let's have a look. I need to go to bar lib docker volumes. In my case, uh, I've got the root um, nginx conf. If you followed the uh, matrix tutorial number one, it's not going to be root nginx conf for you. It's going to be infra nginx conf. 
but the rest is fairly similar. So I can update the default uh, .confile and under slash dot well known slash matrix slash client not server, I can add what I was given on the page. So in my case, I already changed it to sliding.matrix.chipchop.org because this is what makes sense for me. Uh, then I can do a restart uh, root engineering slash one and I can check that it actually happened. Known matrix client and I can see the URL. Oops, and I can see the URL here. And something very interesting happens if you do that. If you click the URL, actually, you can see bad gateway. So what does it mean? Uh, let's have a look at the terminal. So we can monitor what is happening if we do docker logs f root uh, async proxy one. So we can see that if I have my logs here, and if I try to reach the page, nothing happens in the log. So what happens is that the reverse proxy is not able to communicate with the sliding sync proxy at the moment. So traffic does not make the connection up to the reverse uh, proxy. So what we need to do is very simple. We need to just tell uh, traffic that the sliding sync proxy is actually listening to the port 8888. So for that, we just add a service load balancer server port. We just specify the port. I can then do a docker compose dash D. Then I can follow the logs of uh, root async proxy one. And now if I get back to my browser and reload, I don't have a bad gateway, but I have a full full. And if I look at the logs, as I refresh the page, I can see that the sliding sync proxy is actually reached. So that's very good. Uh, this is exactly what we wanted. We have deployed a sliding sync proxy and you could say, oh, but how do I know it works? Well, um, you know it works because you have Element X installed on your phone. So let me record what I'm doing right now. I'm opening Element X and I'm clicking on continue. And if I go to chipchop.org and press next, it's going to ask me for my details. And so I'm going to enter them. Um, I think my password was that. So yeah, just a note here uh, that your um, your home server needs to have registrations uh, needs needs to have um, how to say that not just SSO you need to have password based authentication supported uh, otherwise Element X is going to fail. So I display the logs here so you can see what's happening. Um, you can see that the sliding sync proxy has starting polling uh, my home server. So Element X has acquired an access token by doing a password-based authentication against my server. Then it handed that access token to the sliding sync proxy and the sliding sync proxy is buffering. And now what you can see on my phone screen is that nothing is being display, displayed, which is not super impressive for uh, sliding sync. But as I told you in the introduction, this is perfectly normal. This is just because for the first connection, the sliding sync proxy needs to buffer. So we are going to give it some time to buffer and then it's going to make it. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're going to make it to good use and that you are going to test Element X and give us a lot of feedback. It's a huge, huge improvement in Matrix uh, on the performance side. I hope you enjoyed that. Please bear in mind that a lot of this work on the sliding sync part was done by the Matrix.org Foundation. So if you can afford to support our work, please, please, please uh, support us. You can go to the Matrix.org um, homepage and go to the supporters section and give us 
a few euro, a few euros uh, pounds or dollars if you if you are an individual or you can join you can become a member of the matrix or foundation if you are an organization yourself and that you benefit from matrix i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and i'll see you next week see you around matrix live